Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel, Andra Makes. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what I made for the 70s decade for my Make 9 2023 challenge. I'll be sewing a pattern from each of the past nine decades from the 40s through the 2020s. I did this last year. You guys seem to love it. I had a blast, so I decided to do it again this year. I'll put the playlist to last year's Make 9 in the description box, and then what I've done so far, I'll put the playlist for 2023 in the description box. So, so far for 2023, I've done the introduction video where I've showed each pattern representing each decade that I'm going to be making this year, and I made the dress from the 40s. I'll let you guys decide which pattern you wanted me to make first. It was the viewer's choice, and the 40s won, but there were only either one or two votes that separated the 40s pattern from the 50s pattern. And here's a picture of the dress from the 40s. I made it with a vintage sheet and I also put vintage buttons on it that I'd gotten from a thrift store. I got the sheet from a thrift store also. So check out all those videos if you haven't seen them. But today it's all about the 70s. I'll be showing you the pattern envelope and the dress up close on a hanger and then I will insert pictures of me wearing it and footage of me trying it on for you. And for the 70s, I made Simplicity 8418. This is a pattern from 1977. I got it from a thrift store and paid 50 cents for it. And I already had it in my stash. And this pattern has a maxi length dress and then a below the knee length dress and then a vest. And I chose to make the maxi length dress. I don't have a lot of these in my wardrobe so I really wanted to make that. And it has elastic around the wrists and then an elasticized waistband and then a split down the center and then ties. Well, I should say a split at the neckline so you can get it over your head. I did make a few changes. The split in the front, as you saw, I hope you can see how low it goes. I am not crazy about that, so I, the length, I shortened it two inches. I can get it over my head comfortably, but it doesn't go too low. And I added pockets because I have to have pockets. And the waist elastic for the waist, I used a wider elastic than called for in the pattern because I just prefer that personally. And speaking of which, this pattern calls for, for the casing, for the elastic, you use bias binding, which I love that method. And I'm going to be showing you a hack that I do that makes this so much easier, so much faster, so much more enjoyable. So stay tuned for that. And you can use that hack with any pattern that has a casing for the waistband. Works like a charm. So if you're familiar with that process and want an easier, faster, and more fun way to do it, I'm going to be showing you how. And one change that I planned on making, but it didn't work out, is you saw where the sleeves have the elastic around the wrist. And here are the pattern pieces. Not many pattern pieces at all. You have your front and your back that are cut on the fold, and they are all one piece. And then you have the sleeve piece, and see where it's wide across the bottom? And then there's the facing piece, and then the tie for the that goes around the neck. But back to the change that I wanted to make, but ended up not doing, where it's wide like that, I was just planning on sewing down the side seam and not putting the elastic around the wrist so I could have really wide, dramatic sleeves. And I made it that way and tried it on, but the dress in and of itself has a lot of volume with the length being a maxi length and all that. And just the maxi length of the dress combined with those huge sleeves it wasn't a good look. It was too choir robish for me. But I think with the shorter skirt length that that would look really cool with the wide sleeves and then the shorter skirt. But it was just too much, like I said, too much volume going on. So I did end up putting elastic around the, around the wrist, which I like that a lot better. And when I try it on for you, I'm not going to be wearing a belt because for one, the pattern doesn't call for a waist tie, but I wanted you to see it as is, and I can have a lot of fun. If I want to wear a belt, I think it looks great without a belt too, but if I want to wear one, 
I can have a lot of fun with different styles and colors and things like that. So that's why I didn't make a waist tie. And the pattern pieces for the front and back were really long. It was about one and two third yards of fabric for the front and the back. So that gives you an idea of how long it is. And I'll show you when I show you my dress, but a couple other changes, I guess, additions, I'm not sure what you would call it, I made is I fringed the hem, which is one of my favorite things to do. My fabric I'm going to show you is a linen blend fabric that I got from a thrift store. I think I already said that though. But anytime I have a linen-ish fabric, I love to fringe the hem. I just think it looks so cool. So I'll be showing you that. And also the dress is a solid color. So I think it needed just a little something extra. So I got some wooden beads from Hobby Lobby and I put those on the end of the ties and I'll show you that as well. But I think that looks that just gives it a little something extra. And here's another tip. I'm going to show you the elastic that I use anytime there's an elastic waistband. This elastic isn't necessarily made for that, but I prefer it. And it's fold over elastic. And this is one inch wide. And it is just a lot more comfortable to me. It's a lot softer. It's smoother than regular waistband elastic. So give this a try next time you have an elasticized waistband. I think you'll really like it. It's what I prefer and use exclusively now. And then keeping with the vintage theme, the casing for the elastic for the waist, like I said, calls for bias binding, but I like to use quilt binding because it's wider and the binding I had in my stash is also vintage. It's from 1986 and I got it from a thrift store. So I thought that was super fun. And then another thing I wanted to share with you, if you saw my haul from the Annie's catalog, I showed this pattern tracing paper to actually mark your patterns and it's by Clover. And I told you I would keep you updated if I liked it or not. I love it. I think it is far superior in my humble opinion to the Dritz brand that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Joanne or wherever. So I highly recommend this if you'd like to try it. It's just, it marks a lot smoother and a lot easier and a lot more bold. I can see it a lot better. So I am so pleased with this. If you missed that Annie's catalog haul video, I'll link it in the description box also. Oh, and I forgot to say in the beginning, if this is your first time watching my channel, I don't do costumey vintage. That's just not my jam. Some people do it. They rock it. That's just not what I do. So I didn't want you to be expecting that. So before I show you my dress, here's my little hack of how I do my elasticized waistbands that use binding for the casing. Okay, here's the little hack I did for an elasticized waistband that uses bias binding for the casing. This is the wrong side of the front of my dress and the side seams have not been sewn together yet. And the pattern actually called for one inch wide single fold bias tape, but I prefer a wider elastic. So I use quilt binding. And this is actually vintage that I got from a thrift store. It's from 1986. But I, this is double fold, but I spread it out. So it's this wide instead of this wide. I just prefer that look and that way I can put one inch elastic in it. But I did this to the wrong side of the back of the dress also and this just makes it a lot easier I think than trying to once you have your dress all sewn together then to get the binding on and the elastic through when it's in one big humongous loop. So I just separate it and do the front and the back and then I sew the side seams. So here you can see I have my bias binding sewn on and then for the elastic, whatever measurement you use, just cut it in half. For example, if you need 32 inches of elastic, you'll cut two 16 inch pieces. So I have one of those pieces already threaded through my binding, the elastic is in there. And then I have it secured right here with clips. And then all I need to do now is when I sew my side seams together, the elastic 
waistband will already be put in and it's just so much easier to do this on your machine when it's two separate parts than like I said when it's already sewn together in a tube and trying to keep it smooth and making sure you get it straight and all that so next time you have an elasticized waist that has binding for the casing give this a try and let me know what you think okay what do you guys think about that so much faster and easier and fun okay so now here's my dress here it is it's in this gorgeous blue color and there you can see the neckline where I shortened it about two inches and then there are the fun wooden beads that I put on the bottom of the ties thought that was fun and then the elastic around the wrists and then the elasticized waistband you can see where it's wider than what the pattern calls for like I said I just prefer this I just like this look a lot better than the thinner elastic and then the back and then the skirt portion is really long and then there is the fringe so fun so just a really simple pretty dress that I can dress up or dress down and super versatile so now I'm going to insert pictures of me wearing it and also the footage of me trying it on for you. Okay, here it is on. You can see the neckline where I cut it just low enough where I could get it over my head comfortably but it's not nearly as low as the pattern which I prefer and then there are the fun beads I added to the end of the ties and then the elastic at the sleeves which I love even though that wasn't plan A but there you can see the wider elastic I used I prefer that and then the pockets I added of course gotta have those and now I'll get up on the steps so you can see the entire thing here it is and I can definitely have a lot of fun with different color and style belts but I wanted you to see it as is on the pattern it didn't have a belt or anything so I wanted you to see it like that and then there's the maxi skirt and here's the back So this is what I made for my 70s decade for my Make 9 2023 challenge. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.